I'm back and I am here to show you how to do the lid for the can that has the lip so that you only need a single piece of cardboard to become your top. I will be showing you how to wrap one if you did a decorative paper, sort of simple paper wrap of your can because that would look kind of weird I think with the cardboard, it just doesn't quite go. But if you wanna do it, you can do it with cardboard. Um, I will be showing you how to do the cardboard, cut it and glue it, and then attach a backer piece so that the lid looks good. Um, for this one, it's a little easier, so I just cut to the chase and already cut it. What I found with the um, tracing and the cutting on the corrugated cardboard that's already been peeled is that it's extra flimsy. You know, that's what we needed it to be, which is why we did it that way in the first place and because it's really cool looking and super fun to do. Um, but we're gonna be needing a little more oomph so that it's not just a floppy lid. So I traced the lid onto, I have a secret in here. <laughs> I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. Um, I have a secret here too. It's a cupcake. So because this is kind of flimsy, now that I've taken part of the cardboard off, I've glued it to a cereal box for the last one that I did, um, just to give it a little bit of extra something so it's not so thin. So this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. And because it's, well, it's not really a cupcake, it's a muffin. Um, because it's a muffin, I thought I would just leave the muffin on the outside. If you don't really want the secret muffin, you could glue the muffin down and then it's just a piece of cardboard, okay? I've been eating a lot of graham crackers, so that's what this is from. So I think I'm gonna go with it and put the cupcake face out. The muffin, I mean. Same with all of the other gluing that you're gonna become so good at. You wanna thin it out a little bit with your tip. And then join those two together. If you spin it around a little, it'll smear it down. It'll make sure that it's a little bit more even. And then it'll make sure also that it's touching the edge. You have a little window of Slide time. Ha ha! Muffin! Secret. Okay, one of the things that makes all of the lids kind of unique and different is what you're gonna do on top. So it's very, really difficult. It's easier for the ones that have the flange on the bottom that you've attached because you can grab it. And technically, it doesn't have to have a little doodly doo, even though I think it's kind of cool. Um, for this one, it was recessed, so instead of putting something on the top, which would have covered the center of that flower, I decided to put a leaf, so it becomes like a lift-off tab. So you can do that, or you can do something super cool. For this one, I wanna make a butterfly. Totally random. I know it doesn't have anything to do with my little secret muffin inside the can, but it's gonna be nice, I think. In my head, it's nice. So what I've done for the butterfly is I've drawn half of it on a folded piece. So just like when you made hearts in kindergarten, you'd fold it over, make sure you're drawing on the side that has the fold. And I had to draw this a couple times. I didn't like some of the first versions that I had. This is just one thing. I'll be showing you something with butterfly out of cardboard a little later something a little bit more fun and hopefully exciting to you. But this is your template. So that's a little butterfly. He's gonna sit on there and he's gonna become my top, but he's gonna be made out of cardboard. So I'm gonna draw half of him, on, half of him on. It is very difficult to cut through both of these pieces at once. So you can trace both sides and cut them individually like that. 
You're gonna need the fold to hold them together, so that's kind of why I folded it, the cardboard in the first place. But you can open them up to trace him, <clears throat> and then cut. Probably should have traced it with a pen, but at least with the pencil I can um, trim it off or erase it if it shows up. I specifically chose to put it on the cardboard this way so that it would fold a little easier. You can do it the other way, but because I'm gonna be asking for it to kind of go like that and set in there, I wanted it to have a little natural crease instead of going against the grain of the corrugation. Okay, so one of the things that I've been using a lot of are these branches. So I have these branches from the Japanese maple. It's a big tree in our side yard. And they have these super cute little, this one looks like a snail to me. <laughs> but so that's the little picker upper. It's, and these are all just on with Elmer's. You can't see, I just you know put a little bit of glue in that crease and then stuck a rock on top and it stayed nicely. For this, I will be finding another one of those branches gluing that into the fold, and then gluing this into the fold. So if you can visualize that, that's okay. Not as interesting as I thought it was gonna be. You guys will come up with even better stuff. So that is how to do the corrugation. What's cool about these is you don't have to wrap, but the other one is still just a single piece of cardboard, but you have to go to the trouble of sizing it to um, fit down inside, same with this one, but it needs to be covered with paper because it's not as attractive. So I have two pieces of paper that I'm gonna use. This is gonna be the top, it's gonna be showing up, and then I have a little Flash Gordon, and he's gonna be cut to go underneath. Okay, I've traced where the outline is, because I already, I know, but I wanna show you how to do it, that you have to make your template to fit down inside. So I could just cheat and just use this, but I, if, if this is the only video that you're watching, I want you to know how to create that lid so that it sets down inside. Flip it over, trace it with a pencil. That is the exact edge. That isn't where it needs to sit for it to fit down inside. So there's gonna be some additional work that we have to do before we cut, but this is this is kind of where you have to start. And you'll see what I mean once I cut this out and um, try to set it down in there. If you've watched both of these videos, you know, it depends on the can. Like some of you are probably only gonna watch this because you have two cans that have this kind of top. Um, but if you watch the other one because your cans were, were different, you'll know. So this is when we worked with clay and you create, those of you who created a recessed lid, the, the leather hard clay, what was hard about it was that it had to, you had to cut it. You know, you start off sort of tracing it and then you make it smaller and you make it smaller and you make it smaller. And when it's clay, you can kind of push that in to make it fit. We don't have that luxury with cardboard, but this is a little easier because it's not wet and sticky. Okay, so once you have the first piece traced, you are going to systematically try to make it just a wee bit smaller so that it sets down inside and settles into place. You can draw a little line to give you a view of it, or you can just wing it. You know, I like living on the edge, so I'm gonna wing it, but I'm gonna use that line to get me started. And just cut and hope that you are keeping it round. This is going to become the template for your lid. So you, get, you have to know if it's gonna fit. Otherwise, 
you will be wrapping something and spending all that time doing it and it won't fit into where it needs to sit. And that would be just silly. Sometimes there's a little bit of back and forth. You can always see the part that this is not an odd shape. When we make it out of clay, you never know what it is. So you can kind of like tweak it and, and work with it. But for this, this is a can. It is factory made. So if it doesn't fit in one little spot, you just got to take that little area off. And then just keep trying. Okay, it looks like I could still use a little bit right there. And it is gonna have paper on it. So once the paper is wrapped around, it's gonna give it a little bit of extra space. There's some slight gaps there, but that's not really gonna matter. So don't, don't you know, worry about that kind of thing. Okay, so now, you are going to take it, your template, trace it onto the cardboard, and cut exactly. Now that you know that that template fits, cut exactly to that line. Don't throw this out. I mean, maybe you want to make more. Who knows? Um, this way, you have something. A lot of these lids are interchangeable. So um, even this one, I think. So these are the same diameter. So you could deal with that like that, okay? And have a future lid for a completely different can. You'll cut, just like cutting the other one. It's a little fumbly. You wanna make sure you're cutting on that line. You'll know if it works as soon as you set it into place. And if it's got like a little thing, it means you didn't quite, usually you can see it. I saw that line a little bit. Make sure you have a little bit of play so that when you, when you do wrap it, that it doesn't have um, extra, enough extra paper on it that it's gonna get in your way. So here's my lid. Here's the paper that I want to put on it. I need that to face up, all right? So there's very, th this was the side that I was originally gonna use, but I felt like it was like too much the same. And I also um, didn't feel like I had enough to you know, really deal with wrapping it around. So I've decided to use this little red side. So even though it's different, I've chosen to have that contrast, okay? So you may hold it up to find that spot that you want to capture for your lid. I want a little bit of white on the top and I want a little bit of white on the bottom. Well, it's not really white, it's more like a tan. And you can trace. For something like this, it's hard to see, but I'm gluing it there so that the other side shows up. Some of this is redundant for those of you who have watched several of that. I apologize. But depending upon who's watching what and you know in what order, some of it needs to be kind of repeated. So just slide that around. Flip it, and make sure your glue is completely stuck. Okay, there's a little bit more here that I need, so I am gonna cut some of that off. Leave enough of a surrounding edge that you will be able to snip and wrap it around, okay? So I'm gonna cut here, about a half inch apart. If you watched the first video, you know exactly what I'm doing, so you can fast forward if you like or you can just keep watching so that you can see and marvel in, I don't know, <laughs> in this funness, in my face. <laughs> anyway, 
just keep working your way around. If it's too wide, you will get corners when you fold. So just keep your snips small enough that by the time you go to peel these and glue these down to go over, that you don't end up with any weird points. So it's a little feathery. Okay, but it's going to look like that. You do a bunch of these at a time. There's paper that's gonna cover this up. So you don't have to worry about if they aren't like super totally 100% glued down, it really just matters that the edge is close enough to the cardboard so that you get something that's round instead of something that's sort of like chiseled out. And you'll see it start to shape itself. Anything that's pump, bumping out like that, you can smash it down. And that edge should look relatively round. By, ooh, I still have some by the time it's down. I'm hoping that you'll have fun with what you put on the lid the paper choices that you use and that they become more than just, you know, tins and cardboard um, covered tin. I mean, um, yeah, what am I saying? That they become <laughs> like paper and cardboard stuck to a tin. Okay, they, they can look more interesting than, um, than just that. So hopefully you will embellish whatever it is that you want to do for the lid because that's kind of a place of freedom. Okay. So obviously you can see that it's not completely covered. And if it were to sit on there just like that, oh, I like the contrast. I'm glad I did that. Not the plain old red. This is my favorite side. So I kind of wanted to sort of match that. I don't know what I'm gonna do here for the top. So that's still kind of brewing, but I thought I'd have my secret Flash Gordon kind of thing underneath, sort of like my secret. Little muffin tin. Ding, ding, ding. Um, so I've already drawn the line. The line is the same size as the tin. And that is because in bookmaking land, um, which I love to make books. It's been a long time, but I love them. Um, this is called an end sheet. Okay, so it's the, the thing that covers up the mess. So this just will get trimmed just a little bit so that you can see a little bit of the edge of the, of the wrap around, but more of the um, Flash Gordon thing. Okay, so I'm cutting directly on this line so that it is as shapely as I can get it. Otherwise it's gonna look weird and like I chewed it. Plus, I also don't want the pen mark to be visible. <laughs> Flash! Ah! So right now it's the exact same size as the lid. And that doesn't work because then it gets all, you know, weird along the edge. So very carefully, I'm just going to trim that a teeny, 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 tiny bit. You'll know. Like you just want that little curl of paper coming off. I tried to foot it, uh, fit it on here so that I could see the figure and the words Flash Gordon. Cause you know, it's Flash Gordon. 
Okay, let's see how I did. Ooh, that's pretty good. There. So it's got a little bit of a view of the paper underneath. It's relatively straight in terms of its cut. And now we need to glue it. Okay, there's some cool cars on the other one. That's like the side that I used for that other paper. This is a little harder to glue just because it's paper and then you've got nowhere to put your fingers. So try to get to the edge first, spin it around in the middle where there is no glue. And then at the last minute, you can just kind of go like that. Again, if we were making books or gluing these professionally, I would brush it out. But for this, it's going to be fine. So weird part is the flip. Make sure your fingers are clean. Flip it over and then slide it a little bit because you want that glue to level out and you want to make sure that there's glue all the way to the edge. And this is going to just kind of assure that that happens. Okay, and then once it's down where you want it, smooth it with your fingers. And just like that. Okay, there you have it. So we've got a wrapped lid that has a backer paper, like an end sheet that sits down inside the can. We've got the corrugated cardboard. You don't have to peel the cardboard if you want the top to be smooth, but I just love doing it. So that's why I added the little extra bit of cardboard to the back, just like I did on that one. Okay, so these lidded versions of your tins are due as a glamour shot on Thursday. And, you know, just put them next to one another. You could submit two pictures. I don't mind if you submit, you know, sort of a nice arrangement and photograph it on a, on a nice background so that I don't have a whole lot of clutter to look at. Sometimes my workstation becomes quite messy. So, um, like, don't just take it there. Sort of set yourself up so it looks a little bit better. Okay, I'm here if you have any questions on how to do this, um, just email me and I will get back to you. Okay, so Thursday by midnight and then you'll hear from me on Friday. Okay, and then I will see you soon.